Welcome to the Global Conversation. Europe is stepping up efforts in the fight against corruption and soon the European Public Prosecutor's Office will be able to investigate crimes related to the European budget in the member states. My guest is the first ever European Public Prosecutor, Laura Kodruta Kövesi. The European Union is preparing to roll out hundreds of billions of euros in fresh money for its recovery fund and also for the seven years European budget. And probably some criminal organizations are all already planning to put their hands on this money, at least at some part of this money. How can you safeguard these European funds and which sectors, which projects and which member states will you focus on? If we are talking about the new budget proposal, we need to take into account a couple of simple rules. More money, more flexibility, less rules. This could mean that there is a greater risk to have more fraud offences committed in relation to these funds. The European Public Prosecutor's Office will be part of the solution, but not the only solution. There are several institutions in the European Union that must participate in this common effort to prevent and fight against fraud with financial funds. Do you think there is a systemic risk for corruption in Europe and is it connected to the political leaders? If we're talking about corruption, it exists in almost all countries and not only in the European Union countries. However, if we talk about the scale of corruption in different states, it really depends on the level of involvement of local authorities. Having said that, we cannot confirm that these countries are very corrupt or that others are free from corruption. What are the main obstacles when you set up this institution? Firstly, I'm referring to the lack of financial and budgetary resources. This would be the first obstacle. Another obstacle would be any delay, and I would like to give you a tangible example. The European prosecutors should have been designated at the end of last year, but as of today, they're still not appointed. We cannot have a college without the European prosecutors, and without a college, we cannot define the rules of procedure and the regulatory framework in which the EPPO will function. This procedure has been delayed because Malta did not propose enough eligible candidates. As a result, since December, the whole process has been delayed and I hope that the European prosecutors will be appointed as soon as possible. Now in the Czech Republic, a company linked to the Prime Minister is under investigation for alleged misuse of European funds. Would you take over this case? It's very difficult to discuss hypothetical cases because we must apply the competence that the EPPO has through regulation. The investigation priorities will be established by the college that will comprise of 22 prosecutors from each member state and the European chief prosecutor. It is very important to process all the cases within our competence, irrespective of the person who commits these offences or the place where the latter have been committed. After all, our role as prosecutors is to ensure that justice is equally applied to everybody. Do you think that in Poland and in Hungary the refusal to join the, the public prosecutor's office will increase the risk for corruption related to European funds? It is not only Hungary and Poland. There is also Sweden, Denmark and Ireland. It is difficult for me to comment on the reasons why these member states did not join that EPPO because, after all, it is a political decision and I cannot comment on that. We will investigate certain offences committed in relation to these member states, its citizens or on the territory of these member states. In addition, we will cooperate with the authorities of these states and will apply the judicial cooperation tools that are currently available. It's not only politicians but also white-collar criminals are uh, operating sometimes international organizations for money laundering and uh, fraud. How can you act on this field 
What does the EPPO bring us when we talk about the investigation of these cases? Well, it will drastically reduce the limitations that prosecutors have at their national level, and the exchange of information will be faster and more efficient. In addition, we will improve the procedure of damage recovery inflicted through violation. The evidence produced by prosecutors in one member state could be used in another member state. So all these advantages will allow the EPPO to become an institution that will change fundamentally the way these financial fraud and organized crime offenses have been investigated so far. Since you have been uh, removed from uh, Romania's anti-corruption agency, we don't hear a lot of high-level cases. Uh, is the corruption gone from Romania since you have been removed from your agency? I left the NAD two years ago, and it is difficult to comment on what is happening there. However, we need to take into account the fact that during the last three years, the Romanian justice has been constantly under attack. Many prosecutors and judges have been harassed in many ways. Many disciplinary actions have been initiated and criminal cases have been opened against prosecutors and judges. As a consequence, the independence of justice has been constantly affected through attacks and legislative changes. In Romania, you faced many accusations that you represent uh, foreign interest, secret service uh, interest. Are you prepared for uh, similar attacks on European level? I have always thought that these attacks that were directed not only against me, but also against all the prosecutors and their efficiency, are an evaluation criteria of the quality and efficiency of the work we do. So I expect to see attacks against our institutions and prosecutors. But I think that my previous experience was a good preparation for what will follow. I'm sure that we will form a very good team together with all the European prosecutors. I will not be alone in this fight. We will have an entire team working in the EPPO, and I hope that our activity will have a positive impact. I'm also sure that such attacks will follow, but I'm prepared and convinced that my colleagues will also be ready. Laura Kodruta Kövesi, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you very much.